In this video, we shall differentiate the function shown. Now note that this is a function with infinite self-repeating form. So let's call the function that we want to differentiate y. An important observation about this function is that since this is a self-repeating form function and it repeats all the way with infinite amount of terms, we can label all these terms as y as well. That means we can uh, write the given function in a following form. So hyperbolic sine inverse of hyperbolic sine x plus y. Now let's take the square of this term. So squaring the above, we get y squared equals arc hyperbolic sine of x plus y. Now let's uh, start differentiating. So now we want to differentiate this entire line with respect to x. So the left hand side will simply become the following. By employing chain rule, you can differentiate y squared with respect to x in the following manner. So dy squared dy times dy dx. So that would be the left hand side. The right hand side is d dx arc hyperbolic sine of x. We will come back to this term in a minute plus dy dx. It's that simple. Now the left hand side can further be simplified. This is quite simply 2y and dy dx equals d dx arc hyperbolic sine of x plus dy dx. Next thing to do is to factor out the term terms dy dx in this equation and that's going to be something like that. So d y dx 2y bringing this term to the left that's going to give you minus dy dx so that means minus 1 and the right hand side is d dx arc hyperbolic sine of x. So let's differentiate the right hand side. So the right hand side Let's assume the right hand side is z. So z is arc hyperbolic sine of x. So that means x is hyperbolic sine of z. And dx dz is hyperbolic cosine of z. Now using the identity which states squared of hyperbolic cosine of z minus the square of hyperbolic sine of z is 1, one can rewrite this line in terms of hyperbolic sine z. And in that case it will be square root 1 plus the square of hyperbolic sine of z. Now since hyperbolic sine of z is x, we can write this line in terms of x as quite simply square root of 1 plus x squared. Note that we would like to compute dz dx. So using the result from calculus, that dz dx is 1 over dx dz and we know what dx dz is dz dx will simply becomes 
1 over 1 plus x squared. So now we have the answer for the derivative of arc hyperbolic sine of x, which is 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. And now we have the answer that we seek originally. So dy dx, namely the derivative of with respect to x of that function is quite simply 1 over 2y minus 1 times the square root of 1 plus x squared with this y is the original function that. So this is the answer for the derivative of y with respect to x that we seek. So in general, let's say we want to differentiate a function that look like this. So fx is a function of x which is differentiable and it has an infinite self-repeating form all the way here. So how do we obtain a derivative in this case with respect to x? We follow the same procedure. So since uh, these terms will self-repeat indefinitely, we can call that as y as well. So we can simply write the above line as fx plus y. Now squaring the above line, the above equation, we get y squared equals fx plus y. Now differentiating with respect to x, the left hand side as before by using the chain rule will become dy squared dy dy dx equals df dx. Remember fx is a differentiable function plus dy dx. So the left hand side becomes 2y dy dx. The right hand side is just the derivative of f with respect to x. Let's represent it with this notation, so standard notation f prime x plus dy dx. And solving for dy dx, okay, if you first factor that out, 2y minus 1 equals f prime x, f prime x, we know it's df dx, and that will give you the expression for the derivative of y with respect to x being simply f prime of x over 2y minus 1. So this is the answer for the derivative of that with respect to x. Thank you for watching.